of tale of Parakai B is not your typical one. The author is a creative genius in coming up with a story like this. It is a welcome change from the typical love stories seen in Philippine books. And it is written in Taglish, which is an amalgam of English and Filipino. The author is a well-known and distinguished dramatist, journalist, and scriptwriter from the Philippines. With his unconventional portrayals of love and regret, of love and waiting, of love and society, of love and family, and of love and happy endings, Ricky Lee has established himself as a bold author who can defy cliché and convention. Since 1979, Lee has spent more than 100 screenplays, including Himala, which CNN's top movie of all time in the Asia-Pacific region, Anak, Jose Rizal from 1998, and Madrasta. And among others, his debut book is this book. It contributed to his collection of more than 50 awards from prestigious organizations. He writes in a realistic contemporary style. His corpus of works has spanned over 20 years which include writing short stories, plays, essays, teleplays, and screenplays. Two of his short pieces won first place at the Palanca Awards for Literature for consecutive years, which is an exceptional accomplishment for a writer. After that, he never entered any literary competitions, as he believed that authors shouldn't compete with one another. This book explores a variety of societal issues, including gender inequality, poverty, and political assassinations, all of which are relevant to the state of our society now. It is not just about love, though. It would be crucial to draw attention to how gender roles are portrayed in Lee's masterpiece. He was able to draw attention to concerns surrounding women's roles in the home, the workforce, and society at large. Moving on to the book, it is said that only one in five people will experience happy romantic relationships. Five stories are followed in the book. The first picture is of Jordan and Irene. They grew up together fell in love with another, and made a pledge to get married when they are of legal age. This is a story about how people's lives were affected by broken promises. The second picks Sandra, who made a mistake in her choice of a partner, an illicit romance. Sandra developed feelings for Lupe, her brother. Before their family learned about it and threw his brother out of the house, they shared private moments. Her brother gave birth to an unusual child for her. Sandra developed her own family as the years went by, but despite this, she still longs to meet her brother if only to provide closure. The narrative then follows Sandra as she makes an effort to make amends. The following tale concerns Jake and Erica. Erica is from Maldiaga a place where love is non-existent. Despite their best attempts, none of other people in the room seem to be able to understand the idea itself. When you say it, people will laugh and make fun of you. Then out of curiosity, she made the decision to investigate the meaning of love in its purest form. She was taken to Manila by an identified force where she met Jake and fell in love with him. The story then continues to follow the two as they struggle to understand what love truly means, despite all of their uncertainties. The fourth one features a lesbian named Esther. Sarah, their family's housekeeper, captured her heart. Esther spent her childhood hiding her sexual orientation. She continues to tell herself she is not a lesbian, but her gay son has helped her realize how important it is for her to face the truth. After years of being estranged from Sarah, who has since started her own family, her son assisted her in finding Sarah once more. The plot of the novel then shifts as Esther and Sarah attempt to comprehend their true feelings for one another and what they are capable of doing out of love. Then, the final tale is about Bessie. 
sometimes known as B, to whom this book is dedicated. Lucas, the author of the narrative, was inspired by himself. It could be perplexing, but as I've already stated, this book is a book within a book. If you read it, I'll make more sense to you. As their love story entwines with every other story in the book, we follow it. Will the thesis in the book that just one in five people will be content be true? The book centers on love. It is about the power of love and its many aspects. With the help of this book, I was able to gain a deeper knowledge of what love truly is and how important it is to every one of us in our own individual definitions and experiences. The novel demonstrates that not every love story has a happy ending. Not every character in the book experiences a happy ending. Even while some stories may not end happily, it's crucial that people maintain their optimism and don't give up. Loving helps us to better appreciate and comprehend the life we lead. It's not about the destination, contrary to what many claim, but rather about the trip. I had the impression that I was watching a movie while reading the book. The story is told by the author in a very cinematic manner. The detailed descriptions increased my understanding and appreciate of the novel. Each scene felt like it transported me. Additionally, the novel has a poetic feel to it. It has fantastical features that I liked and it works nicely with the imagination. This book's characters are all well developed which is commendable despite its little length. Realistic characters were depicted by the author. They have depth and are interesting. The premise and current approach of the book appealed to me. It deviated from custom and protocol. It was delivered in a very entertaining manner, and the text flows well and is simple to understand. The book contains two endings, one open-ended conclusion and one that the author added in which he discussed notions and ideas that gave the novel a bit more depth. He wrapped up all of the unfinished storylines there. I was pleased with the finish since it was what I would expect from a skilled storyteller. This is Fatima Jubail, Ateneo Communicator, telling you one of Rikili's book, Para Kaibig.